I now want to take a quick step back from adding to this website and take a moment to look at what we call semantic elements. Semantic elements are simply elements which clearly describe their contents, not only to tell the browser, but other developers also looking at your code too. This is a diagram of a typical website. The body contains all of the contents which we see on the screen, as we already know. Here, we see some typical sections of a website. Each section has a div element. A div is a section or division used to group together content. We have already done this in our project by grouping the header section, the sidebar, and each product. This is how things have been done in web design for quite a long time, and still are. Div elements are perfectly fine to use. In fact, we'll use them during this course quite a lot. Often, you will see an ID attribute added to each of these divs. This allows us to select a certain div we want to apply styling or layout to using CSS. Here we also add some more div elements, this time nested inside of existing ones. Again, this is fine and very common. We've already done this in the project by having a surrounding parent div for all of the main content, then nesting a div inside for each product, inside of this main div. Since HTML version 5, we now have some alternative elements which we can use, just like you can see here. Rather than using a generic div, we can now use these semantic or more descriptive elements. Both the div and all these new elements we see here still have an opening and closing tag to surround the content too. We have a header element, which we can add to our project in place of the div surrounding our site title and navigation menu. There is also main, which contains the main content of the website. This is not to be used for any content which is repeated in other pages, such as sidebars. For example, the side element we see on the right is often used for sidebars and is usually repeated across the website. Therefore, it is best to be kept separate from the main content. We also have a sidebar and footer too, so we can make use of all these new elements here inside of our project. This is the example we've seen earlier, but this time with the newer, more semantic elements. Here you can see an article element which is ideal for uses such as a blog post or a widget which has self-contained content. There is also a section element below too. This, as it sounds, defines a section of our web document. This is to group together related content. We also now have the nav element which we can use to surround our navigation links. We don't need to add these to all navigation areas of our site. It's only intended to be used for major blocks of nav links. Note that we've placed this inside of the header for this example. However, this is not required. It can be placed inside or outside of the header or even nested inside of other areas too. We can also take things even further by reusing elements such as the header or footer. To define the header or footer section of an article, for example, or even place sections inside of other elements such as the sidebar. Remember, though, this is just one common way to use these, that you're not forced upon us to use in any particular way. And their use will also differ depending on the style of website which you are building. Now we know what is available to us, we can now move on and add these to our project.